am back. I finished um, braiding up until there were about one and a half inches left here, um, just in time to put on my last bead with you. So again, we're going to just put this on the middlemost wire. And we're going to do probably about three quarters of an inch of braid past this last bead. And then we'll have probably about three quarters of an inch left to finish off the ends of the bracelet, which I will show you how to do. Or it looks like we might have less. Sometimes the weave gets a bit uh, thick, thicker, wider than you expect. But we'll make it work. Okay, so that's... Well, let's do one more here. Alright, so at this point, this is a pretty good amount of uh, braid to have after the last bead. And at this point I'm going to go to the other end that we have and take off the masking tape. Um, if your wires get kind of sticky, you can just use an alcohol swab or something to take it off. In fact, let me grab one right now. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to clean off the sticky that got left from the masking tape. And for some reason, it seems to leave more on this silver wire than my uh, aluminum wire that I also use to make this bracelet, so it always takes me by surprise a little bit. There we go. And now you can see that it's a little bit messy where we started this braid. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and reverse it a little bit and then rebraid. So I'm just pulling down the strands to their appropriate sides. And kind of straightening them out a little bit. Okay. And to rebraid this end, we're actually going to have to. Uh, so here's where we were braiding on this other end. We're actually going to have to flip over the bracelet to finish the braid here. It's just the nature of uh, how the braid works out. So now I can continue this taking the outermost from the group of three into the middle. And one more time here. And just make sure that it's all nice and neat. Let's see. I don't like the shape that one took. So we'll just adjust it a little bit. And I think maybe we need to do one more, perhaps. Okay, and you want to have roughly the same amount of braid after the bead, uh, after the last bead on each side. <clears throat> Just like so. Okay, so now let's figure out how to finish these ends off. First of all, I'm going to take my flush cutters and make sure that all the ends are nice and flush. And if you have one end that's longer than all the others, go ahead and trim it down a little bit. teensy bit more. Just 
just like that. And then we're going to pick up our round nose pliers. And I'm going to flip this over. It's easier to do this way. Um, you want to start curling each of your wires in a tight turn. We're going to make the end meet right like that. And you want to pick which side of your bracelet is going to be the front side. I think for me, they're both nearly identical, but this one just appeals to me more. So this is going to be the front of the bracelet. And when you're curling your wires, you want to make sure that the swirls lie on top towards the front side. Um, that's easiest to do from the back side, actually. So let me show you what I mean. So this is going to go under these wires so that it winds up on the front of the bracelet, just like that. And I like to start with the bottom most wires, so let's do this one now. Okay, so there's that one, just like that, and we're going to do these two now. Now I chose to make this a cuff style design, so it doesn't have any um, chain or anything to fasten it. Uh, but it would be very easy to convert it into a type of bracelet that has a chain and clasp. And I will show you how or where you would put the uh, chain to do that in a moment here. Let's see. I didn't get that closed up completely, so I'm just going to squeeze it in a little bit there. And you can see that with each with each new swirl, it's kind of nestling in on top of the previous layer of swirls. And we're coming to a point, kind of a triangular shape. And then with the last wire, you can really choose which direction you want the swirl to go. I'm thinking I want it to swirl this way from the front. Keep keep switching on you, hope that's not too confusing. And I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And there we have it. And then I just like to kind of take my chain nose pliers and gently flatten it out. That just helps it nestle together nicely. So here's the front and the back. And we'll just do the same thing on the other side. So again, we're going to trim. All our ends are flush, and this is the front side. So we're going to take these swirls to the front, which means tucking them under right here. So here's the back, here's the front, and we'll go to the other side. Okay. 
And let's do our next row here. Sorry, went out of screen there a little bit. And our next wire here. Okay, and <clears throat> again, I like for it to kind of make a triangular point coming to the end, so sometimes you have to do some extra shaping to achieve that. Okay, and we have our last strand here, and I think with this one it's going to work best to take it this direction. Gonna tighten this up a little. And at a certain point it gets too hard to use your round nose pliers with these tight spirals, which is why I'm switching to these chain nose. These are um, also Zuron brand, for those who are curious. And there we have our second point, just like this. And nice little trick, I mean it looks great this way, um, if you want to make your braid a little tighter, what you can do is very gently bend your bracelet laterally, first one way and the other, and this will close up your braid just a teensy bit, and it's also a good way to eke out just a little bit more length for your bracelet if you need to do so. Also, if you wound up with any parts that are kind of bulging out more than others, you can use this uh, bending back and forth technique to even that out a little bit. There we go. And I think it looks nice to have it kind of curving out slightly around each bead. Just a personal preference there. There we have a fairly uniform looking bracelet. And I just, I really love this weave. Again, it looks more complicated than it is. And then at this point, all we have to do is start shaping it into your bracelet shape. You just want to be sure you do this gradually so you don't get any weird kinks. You could also shape this around a um, you know shampoo bottle or something. Just whatever shape looks good to you so that you get a nice even curve. But I find that doing it by hand seems to Seems to work pretty well. Okay, so again, I was saying earlier, if you wanted to have a chain on this, you could very simply um, stick a jump ring through these two end spirals and attach a chain and clasp. Um, that might be good too if you wind up with a smaller bracelet than you expected and needed to bridge more of a gap to put a chain in there. But the cuff style works perfectly well. And to put this on I like to turn it sideways and kind of slip it over my hand. 
Um, it doesn't hurt to deform it to get around your wrist, but I just find that um, it makes less work doing it that way. So you can see a very dainty bracelet. Um, if folks like this tutorial, I might in the future do one on a um, seven or nine strand braid, which will be quite a bit wider for more bold look, I guess you could say. So there we have it. And again, you can do a lot with this style. Uh, here's one I did with glass pearls. Also makes a very nice look. Um, and this, this one is out of aluminum, as is this one. You can see I did alternating colors. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Put comments below if you have uh, any suggestions or ideas for future tutorials, or if you just have any questions, uh, run into trouble making this. I'd love to hear from you. And I also wanted to say, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future. I do have many more planned. And also, if you could just take a few moments to check out my Etsy shop and Facebook page in the description below, that would be lovely. So thanks for watching, and happy crafting!